Hello everyone. My name is Pete and this this is Swift and Tips podcast. I hope you're listening to me because this is the first live streaming that I am doing in my channel. So, well, I'm pretty excited. I wanted to do this for a long time ago. Um, before starting, let me ping everyone in the social media that I'm online. Uh, online. Let me... Uh, uh, that's the thing when you are recording, or you're not recording, when you are live streaming. Uh, let me... No, one second. Uh, yeah, you're you're seeing to me, right? I don't know if there is anyone around, uh, but hopefully, hopefully you are having a nice day or nice evening. Um, give me one second. Give me one second, just to complete this thing. Uh, so if you are there, tell me, how are you? Tell me, how's it going? How was your weekend? Well, your week, actually. Are you excited about the new beta 2? Xcode 15 beta 2? I am. I feel that, um, well, it's a progress from the beta 1 version. And I don't know, I guess Apple is, you know, every year getting more experience about how releasing beta software. Okay, here we are. We are online on Twitter now linking. Let me just ping everyone there. All righty. There you go. Let me ping the people, the two guys that are following me on Mastodon, there you go, alrighty, okay, now let me see my own face here, okay, well, maybe my mom is just watching, uh, <laughs> okay, I was expecting at least two, two guys, two people around, so if you are one of those, oh, well, hello, and I know it's 6 30, uh, in the morning for uh, Americas. Um, but again, it's my only time when I can record the, those kind of things. And the house is, is quiet. Uh, my kids are still sleeping. So it's it's a good time for me. Oh, we have Mohammed there. Hello. Uh, hi. Thank you for coming because uh, I, I fell alone. <laughs> now I'm not alone. So I... Uh, I'm glad that you're here. <laughs> uh, let me just get my uh, drink of coffee. And, well, like I said, um, I started this session um, two weeks ago when I um, published the video about my impressions of WWDC. And uh, I, I share my experience from my road trip of the day one, well, day zero, actually, day one in the keynote, and then the Apple Developer Conference, the uh, Apple Developer Center, one event that was a uh, live session. Uh, and, and I said, okay, uh, I definitely like to do this kind of content. I don't know if you know this, but um, I used to have a, a, a podcast uh, for uh, uh, in Spanish um, with other friend, and we used to talk a lot uh, many things iOS mostly 
but sometimes about other kind of things like uh, soft skills, you know, career path, or uh, how to make your resume um, the best way possible, uh, etc. So many things that, um, yeah, iOS is great, Swift is great, but the point is uh, those are tools, and sometimes we need other kind of tools to make of life, uh, professional life better. That's my goal with this kind of live sessions. And yeah, uh, I, I don't also don't want to be the guy that uh, just publishing videos and nobody cares about it. <laughs> I, I, I will also to express my personality because when I, when I record my videos, I just got to the point, right? I use scripts and I talk about uh, technologies uh, from Swift and iOS. So, uh, but I would like also to express myself uh, with you and also receive feedback from you directly, right? So um, that's basically my goal with this kind of um, podcast, live podcast. Um, but anyway, so in this um, episode, number two, I want to talk mostly about two things. Um, one is uh, about the something that took me around two weeks to understand. Maybe for you it took just one hour. Maybe for others it will take months. Who knows? But um, it's something that it's maybe not uh, you know the one of the highlights of the of top of DC or not that top DC. The Swift language, the new version 5.9, uh, which is uh, parameter packs um, for generics. Um, that's one thing I would like to talk because I think I need to give you this information. <laughs> I don't know. I feel that I, I got the idea of how to use this thing, this feature. And also would like to explore a little bit about what I learned from WWDC sessions uh, regarding to Vision OS. Um, I, uh, if you are watching me, I don't know if I'm still here, um, and you have that Hello World uh, project from Apple, that one that show us in, in the WWDC uh, about Vision OS, could you please share the link? I tried to to find out that link, but I wasn't able to find it for some reason. I was just exploring, uh, you know, a brand new app um, with Vision OS, but I would like just to take a look here on live, <laughs> in live with you. Um, okay, let's get started then with the first topic. Um, so type parameter packs. Let me actually share my screen because I have a few things to share. Um, okay, percent, share screen, window, okay. Uh, okay. I will share this, uh, type parameter bags. Uh, we can see I have learned a lot <laughs> from that. Um, yeah, this is the main um, video that you will find in in dot dot twenty three, right? And you might find this um, of content about the proposal. Um, yeah, it's to be honest, it's pretty technical. I don't want to explore it here, right? Because it will be boring, right? It's a lot of content, a lot of things that you need to, to understand. But I would like to summarize that in just a few um, uh, code examples. Let me go back um, to Xcode. And now let me open Xcode. Where is Xcode? There you go. Yeah. So, okay, let's remove this. Um, I would like just to say before starting, this feature is not something that you will use in your, mostly in your days. Right, um, it's more. I don't know why I I am this way uh, because I, I'm seeing that a lot of people are exploring macros, um, observable, um, the Swift data, 
Don't get me wrong. I will explore that in detail pretty soon. But I said, okay, I would like just to explore this because nobody is touching it. So I prefer just to go to the hard way <laughs> and get it and then, you know, show it to you. Um, very important. Generics are one of the most important things in Swift. And if you understand generics, you have a powerful tool in your hand. Okay. Let's just start from the very beginning. Okay. So for example, you have a function to say hello, right? The classic example, when you provide a print statement to say hello, right? Hello. Yeah. And you print this. Hello. Right. So nothing serious here. But now, um, if you want to uh, provide, what's going on with this? Okay, please let me, please tell me that the uh, beta 2 is not having issues with the playground. Hello? Okay, let me try one more time. I'm just warming, warming up, so let's see. Preparing, ready to continue. What's, what? Okay, let me start over. Because for some reason, this is not working. Also, are the issues when you are online? What's going on, my friend? This used to work in beta one. I don't know what's going on here. Oh, okay. Let me share again. Finally. Hey, Valerio. Hey, saludos, España. <laughs> well, I don't know if you speak Spanish, but I will assume if you're in Spain. But if not, yeah. yeah. Greetings from regards to Spain. Uh, share screen, yeah. Uh, it's, it's funny because um, you need to talk. Yeah, right? You, you need to, to, to keep talking. You need to say hello to people. And then you need to focus on your content. Huh? <laughs> this, is, this is fun. Um, let me drink some coffee. You know, I, I also like later, not in this conversation, but later, talk about um, interviews. That's something really, really, uh, you know, challenging to explore for most people um but this is like like that <laughs> in some way um especially in big tech companies when you need to express yourself and keep talking all the time and get over everything that is in your mind put it away in your mouth so <laughs> i don't know i look to do some references <coughs> sorry for that so, okay, yeah, uh, okay, the playground is working. Now, um, what are we going to do? So now we want to, you know, pass something here to say uh, uh, hello, right? And, and pass a uh, value here. So we have a value, and this value should have a type, right? So let's put it in. Well, a string, in this case, right? So we'll say hello, hello value, right? And that's it. So this will print something. Now we will require something. Hello, uh, Pete, right? And yeah, that's the thing, right? Nothing serious here. Now, uh, ooh, what if we want to use this hello to, you know, say hello to every every type of Swift, right? Um, without generics, you will have to copy paste this uh, function and then create a one function for int, and then create another function for uh, uh, double, and so on, right? So uh, now I am able to uh, say hello to number one and say hello to 12.3, uh, right? Um, if you print this, it's working, right? So this is not uh, rocket science. Um, but the problem without generics is that 
I will have to create one hello function for every single type in Swift. And that's boring. So one alternative will be, instead of creating this, um, someone could say, okay, we can come in this and then create another function and then uh, put any, right? And yeah, that's it. Now any kind of value can fit here. Well, what will happen? Well, uh, oh, in this case it's working because print is is you know expecting any. But let's say that you want to do something comp really complicated. So um, let's say if we want to verify if this is a string, right? So we'll say uh, uh, we need to verify if 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 values is um, is a string. Um, or, or let's say, capitalize the, the, the word. So uh, first, we need to verify if this is uh, uh, a type of string. Um, so, but the point with this is that using any, first off, you are losing. Oh, okay. It is not working here. But the point is that you're losing information about what is the value type. Hey, Franklin. Hello. Welcome. Um, so, and this is not convenient for many reasons, right? Some other people could say, hey, you can use also a, a protocol, right? Uh, yeah, but the, again, it's not a right solution. What we're going to do here then is using generics. If we create a, a generic type here, you know, this is a generic uh, a type parameter that we are providing. And then we provide it here, a value of type T. Now, um, yeah, for example, keep work. It's, it's working. But now every single type, regardless of being protocol or being concrete type or whatever, or being class or struct, will fit in this, in this um, uh, hello function. Yeah, that's a basic theory of how generics work, right? Of course, there are many things to do. Um, but, you know, keep that in mind because that the same concept applies for parameter backs. So now we have another problem. Let's say that uh, you have, a, a you know, one of the classic methods, sif function. A sif function is getting an input from many many parameters, many va values, and then it returns one single um, tuple that contains all the inputs that you provide, okay? So um, let's say, for example, uh, we have an uh, item here. And this item will be of, uh, you know, any type, right? Hey, type A, right? So, uh, yeah, for... for for one single value, we don't care, right? Because we, we we have already that value. So this will be necessary to have a type A and type B, right? So let's put item one. Um, then let's put item, item two, okay? Okay. And then, yeah, uh, we're going to return return a b okay return item item one item two right that's it so if we assign this to something right um you might want you may see okay okay there you go oh, crap we have a, a tuple containing that, that that information. Instead of having two, two individual uh, objects around, you just have one. But what will happen if you add a third one? Well, you can't because this is an extra argument, right? And then you might say, uh, okay, but um, is there a way to do this? Uh, I know. Um, like a list of generic types. Well, in Swift 
5.8, you had to do, uh, well, you have some options. But like I said in the previous um, example of the foundation of generics, uh, you have those options, but with some limitations. But before starting, in this case, you will have to then create another function because, for example, um, if we if we add another uh, type C, then now we mandatory need another type here, uh, uh, another parameter, and we don't want that. We want to keep this with two for two values, and then another one for three, and our own for four, and so on. So we'll have again to duplicate this for many, many cases, C, and then C and D, all right? And yeah, this is boring, right? We don't like to do boring things here. Three, C, and C, and item three, and item three, item four, now oh, whatever. Then here we will need C, we will need D, and this guy here, and another one with D, right? Now we can do this. Uh, let's search from up this and then put this and use one here and four parameters here. Oops. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. This is four. Okay. Thank you, compiler. Okay, yeah, there you go. But again, if I add another type here. Yeah, thank you, Valerio. Um, look at that, yeah. It's a nightmare. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Yeah, in look at that. Uh, let me let me go to Swift UI for a moment. If we got um, this stack, for example, let me let me add a this stack here. If, yeah, there you go. Let's go to this guy here, Iron Builder. If you know, <coughs> Iron Bean, uh, View Builder is the result builder capable to construct a Swift UI view. Okay. So, uh, and to do that, uh, you need to use this build block. I made a video about it, just in case. Uh, you can find it in, in my uh, channel. Uh, yeah, this build block requires a few uh, of, you know, uh, constraints about how to understand the, the DSL, the domain-specific language for SwiftUI. But the thing is, if we go down, you will find out that there is a build block containing uh, you know uh, a type parameter with two val two, two types right two two arguments and then return a tuple of two two views okay and then if we scroll down you will find out this nightmare right until at this point getting 10 um 10 views in, in, in a row in um in the same uh, Swift UI uh, container. Uh, that's the reason if you you are limited just to use 10 views in the same uh, container. Uh, and then if you add another one, well, you can't because this is just prepared uh, for up to 10 items in the same, in the same VStack, for example. So um, that kind of things is what we're going to solve with type parameters. It's, again, this is not something that you will have to use every day, but it's good to know in case that happens. So in the same way we find the in the foundation of generics, this repetitive work, we are here repeating uh, uh, code again, right? Unnecessary, right? And we have some limitations. So uh, some people could say, hey, but you can create a, a C function with um, uh, variety arguments already. Yes, you can, but there is a problem. Uh, for example, you can use uh, 
item, and then you can use, uh, I don't know, T, type T, and you can do this. Um, but, the prob but there is a problem here. First, uh, all the types in this parameter will require to be um, the same type. You, you're not allowed to do this, for example. All the all, all the, uh, uh, the type T will be int or all strings or whatever. But even worse, the problem is that you don't have any way to to create these kind of tuples. There's no way to do it, right? So um, I mean, it's quite complicated. So the thing is, instead of doing all this boilerplate code, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do. Um, let me let me just comment this to avoid any issue. You know, let me just copy copy this as an example. Yeah, Valerio saying, no way, I never checked that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, sometimes it's necessary just to understand a few things. Um, um, so, okay. In this case, if we want to accept any kind of types, any kind of generic types in this in this method, what we're gonna do is create something, uh, create a type A. But we're gonna add the keyword each. Oops. Each. This is again just think about like uh, repetition of types in this uh, angle bracket. Uh, code okay now what we're gonna what we're gonna do here i'm gonna remove this guy here uh we're gonna remove this item one here and what we're gonna do is creating this syntax repeat each this it's um this is where things could be confusing Okay, but I will try to, to, to do my best. So uh, this uh, each A, it's representing, I mean, uh, the n number of types that will be available in this uh, in this function. Okay, and this repeat is necessary uh, in case of you have. Uh, other gener internal generic types inside of uh, whatever type is here. For, for example, if you explore the WC session, you will see that there is, uh, in the example, they use something like request request uh, payload, right? But in this case, the payload is like the A type here. So uh, this could be able to do things like this. Right when you uh when there is an, uh, a type that is depending of another uh parameter uh yeah generic type parameter right so um this thing what we're gonna do is creating uh, a repetition of all the parameters required for your function okay in our case it's more simple it's simpler than that uh, we just simply we're gonna create or replicate an n, not not infinite because in the infinite is uh, is not existing in, in computing. But yeah, um, the compiler will figure out the requirements for your function. Once you are calling it, we'll say, okay, we are capable to replicate and create an an a specific concrete function. Uh, according to the n numbers of parameters you're gonna provide, okay. If you forget to put this, don't worry. The compiler will tell you, "Hey, you forget this," and then you're good to go. Repeat, okay. Um, then, then here, uh, yeah, we don't have item one and item two. What we're gonna return? Okay? We have to return a tuple. Well, in this case, we're gonna return. Repeat each A. Maybe you're confused already. Don't worry. Don't worry. Everyone will understand this pretty soon. Now, 
this is required because um, this repeat each A, it's literally creating a comma separated list of, uh, of things. In this case, repeat each A is creating something like uh, an, a type A, A1, A2, A3, and so on until a n depending on the number of arguments basically this 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 repeat each it's it's that it's just a gen generic way to represent that the same way here uh this will this will create uh an n number of items you know, but internally it will call it item one item two and, and so on right so here uh based of that we're gonna need repeat each item. And yeah, it's working. Now, now this thing, um, it's again, not, um, they call it, it's not a first class series. In. That means it's not like, hey, let's put uh, um, any kind of dot and then reverse or this is not a collection, right? Don't confuse with that. Uh, again, this will create a, a comma separated list of items. In this case, it will create a comma separated um, list of item one, item two, and so on, okay? In for, for this example, because we are we are repeating the pattern for each item provided here. In this case, we are creating a comma separated list of n number of types. But think, but look at that. The n number of items, it's matching the n number of types provided in this method. And then now we can just uh, comment this and look how this is working and then if now at four five whatever blah 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 okay maybe this one not gonna work there we go how this is working that's it this is <laughs> how this thing work the parameter pack thing so um, again, this may be confusing because you don't have any an example. In fact, I tried to find out an example, uh, but I couldn't, right? I don't have anyone. Well, the only one I have is this guy here. So what I did is, um, is creating my own definition of this. Of course, my definition will not work because it's, um, it will get, have conflict with the build block that is implemented in Swift UI. But let me show you this. Um, but later saying, could Apple replace the build builder implementation? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to show that right now. Um, let me open. Hello, my. Okay. I think I have that example around. Give me one second. Oh, hello. I have an example with hello world around. Look at that. Yep. This is my, my own definition of, you know, trans... Oh, oh come on, dude. View, uh, view, lock. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know what happened, but yeah, I I created my own definition of build block for Swift UI um, using this. Uh, this is marking for Swift UI. Yeah. And where here we have. Um, yeah, a static function will build block. We are saying that each C, which is content, or mo mostly Apple or 
the convention to to mark uh, a, a a view that is provide uh, that is a confirming view protocol. Huh? Uh, yeah, you can do this, for example. Uh, you can uh, make that uh, specific um, uh, the different types of concrete types here uh, conform to uh, to a specific protocol. So here each C, which is which means uh, each view um, will be provided, and then we have um, n number of views represented by uh, uh, the n number of C uh, views, C type. Sorry. And here we are, uh, you know, um, sipping everything and putting everything in a tuple view provided by CFUI. Then we are returning this. I'm not saying this is will this is internally uh, or will be the, de the definition of the new build block. But technically, it's not far away from that. So, yep. Instead of having multiple, multiple things like that, Apple could just create one single version of this build block and it will work as suspected. That's another thing to, just to keep in mind. You can... <coughs> um, sorry. You can... Um, uh, wrap everything in another type as needed. If you need to provide um, a protocol constraints or things like that, for example, here we are returning a, a view, and then returning a, a, a tuple, a single, a simple tuple will not conform to anything. You will have problems. So that's one technique just to um, put in everything in a dedicated uh, type, dedicated struct, that struct could conform a view or any protocol you need. So that's it. And then in summary, again, you will have to deal with this kind of things if you are having multiple generics, a duplication of generic functions, one after another, with that limitation of, of arguments. If you need that, or you need to use uh, an uh, undeterministic number of tuples, well, side parameters is something that you need to take a look. So, well, what do you think? <laughs> I would like to hear your comments. Well, read your comments, in fact. Um, well, well, that's what I got for um, type type parameter tuples. No, <laughs> parameter pack, sorry. Yeah, uh, I will. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. Um, I, I will make a video uh, just to summarize that with animations and all those things uh, I, I love to do. But again, one of the things that's why I'm doing this uh, live session is, is because nowadays my lifestyle is having issues creating content every week. It's impossible for me, right? Because making videos is, it sucks. Let's let's put it in that way. It's not fun. Um, it consumes a lot of time. Um, and if if I had to make videos, literally producing scripts and then uh, recording and then uh, uh, you know editing videos, I am not researching. I am not investigating about Swift. I'm not in, I'm not creating a new app. So it's a lot of work, a lot. So. I try to make short sometimes just to summarize something really quick in one minute, right? That's one thing I, I'm trying to do. But sometimes, I mean, short videos are okay, but are not for every every case. Sometimes you need at least three, four, five minutes to explain something because, you know, uh, don't get me wrong, but sometimes, I mean, you, you need to be careful that you are eating junk food, but... Uh, Junk food is good, but not every time. <laughs> so in the case of shorts, it's okay, but don't, don't expect that you will learn a lot of things just watching shorts. So sometimes you need to go tight, but that doesn't mean uh, go, go deep in, in some content. Um, that doesn't mean that you need to watch a 40 minute video <laughs> or someone like me talking, right? So uh, I, I'm trying to summarize that, but that's the point. Sometimes I, I, I like to, um, be around, right? I'm still around. 
if I'm not posting something today, uh, it's because I'm very busy with my work or because I'm investigating or researching or do something like that. So <laughs> that's the thing. Um, yeah, let me read an uh, explanation. I have one question for Mohammed. There is a no limit here for parameter count. We just pass what we want. We just wonder how compiler deal with that under the hood. Um, uh, technically, yeah, there's no no limit. But again, uh, the only the only thing with this is that um, you need to use the re repetition pattern, which means the repeat each blah blah blah. So your object, um, you you need you need to me. Most of the time, you want to work with this kind of uh, unlimited number of uh, of parameters along with tuples. That's the thing with this. So if you if you explore the the proposal in Swift evolution, um, basically all those things are together. So if you try just to use the n number of, of generics, probably you will realize that it doesn't make sense to you uh, to, to use it without tuples because it will be really frustrating to use uh, the repeat each uh, pattern because that kind of object, again, is not a first class citizen. So that means you cannot put it in a, uh, you cannot use this as an array. That's That's my point. Right, using arrays is is, a, is great because I mean they they, have, they provide a lot of other other functionalities and things. They even uh, in the proposal I read that they even explored uh, mapping, you know, dot map to do other things and transform maybe that tuple into something else. Something really cool will be uh, iterate over the tuple, right? Because right now there's no way to do it. I mean there there are a lot a lot of workarounds that you have to do if you want to. Um, uh, try to iterate over a tuple because you need a tuple is like a, a struct, right? With n number of parameters, but you maybe don't know that that number, so it will be hard. And you cannot just use oh that tuple dot count. That will not that will not work because they are not elements; they are properties. That's the only thing that this definitely will um, receive some improvements over time. That I'm pretty sure about it, uh, but for now it's just um, just very very specific cases. Um, but just uh, answering your question, yeah, you can use any number of items of um, parameters. Um, but again, um, you maybe face many issues. In fact, I <clears throat> if you watch my video about the um, result builder. I, I try just to convert my build blocks into uh, this um, new syntax. But I realized that I was over-engineering things. <laughs> and then I leave it out of, of the scope and then just give what I had. Uh, because if you have, um, if you just need one protocol to satisfy uh, um, the parameter types, the, the, the argument, sorry, um, you are good to go. So again, this is just very specific. If you need an, mostly an n number of tuples, that uh, other thing. I hope I was clear with that. Um, but yeah, definitely, I guess the most obvious thing to solve here is is the view builder issue uh, because they use view uh, tuple view to attack. Uh, or, or construct the Swift UI builds uh, views. Sorry. Okay. So I I would like to uh, move on now with Vision OS. Um, let me just tell you something. Please insert the doc the doc meme of I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so this is not a tutorial. This is just sharing my thoughts about what I learned um, from some of the sessions in DC and um, just exploring uh, Hello World example. Well, not the Hello World. Uh, in fact, if you if you have that example, that link, please share it to me because I tried to find it, but I couldn't. I don't know why. 
They should be around. And I saw someone sharing that in in Twitter. And I I thought I just saved that in, in my bookmark, but I didn't. And then I lost that link forever. <laughs> but not forever, but I don't have it right now. Anyway, um, let me... Let me share my screen again. I, I I didn't prepare anything fancy to be honest, but um, let me let me share this. But uh, uh, let me use this this format. Oh, no, this one is cool. Okay, or this one? No, this one is cool. So um. Where's my iPad? I have my iPad here. I have a question for you. Do you use iPads? I mean, do, do you have iPads? Uh, and do you use it? I I think it's... I mean, my usage is not super frequent. I, I use it because I, I, I try it, but I force it. Not because it's natural to me to use it. Um, anyway... <laughs> Let me just get, um, just in case to you, uh, there is a dedicated section in the, the developer, well, what is the name of the app? Yeah, you know, probably, probably you, you know this already. Uh, where is it? Yeah, oops. There is a developer app there. And if you go to a spatial computing, uh, you will see, you know, a lot of videos about it. Uh, so exploring this will take a while, right? But I took my time to read a, a, or to, to watch a few of the sessions. One of those that is really cool, and I recommend you if you want to take a look to the vision OS, is the principles of spatial comp uh, design. I'll tell the R, the UX or, or the guidelines or recommendations for of this new um, interaction, okay? Uh, you may you may see my my demo uh, my um, the, with the Vision OS simulator. I want to explore in just a moment. Um, that I mean, it's it's amazing. It's like wow. <laughs> I I guess when people start using the the Vision Pro, every the internet will blow away again. <laughs> so, but one of the things I learned that I want to share with you. I just took screenshots of that. Hopefully, Apple will not, you know, remove my video for of my last session for doing this. Um, but let me just give you some insights of what I got from from that session. One of that is well, basically there are three pillars of the Vision OS design uh, system. You have Windows that you know, like the two D. Uh, object displaying an app, you know, you might see all of that already in many Twitter content, uh, the content creators around. And then you have vol volumes. Uh, well, you know, you you can uh, uh, show 3D objects there, and you have spaces. Spaces is literally what is around you. Okay, uh, that's the basics of this. In fact, uh, let me just tell you that I had the opportunity to to be in um, in the only one, in the only live session in Dub Dub DC um, a few weeks ago, and they summarize all the videos that you will see in this in the spatial computing category. Um, yeah, they they show many things, and I will just try to talk uh, a few of them. So yeah, this. Those three are the main points for you to understand. Uh, if you are going to work with Windows, that's amazing because most of the work you have done in iOS or macOS, it's straightforward to Vision OS. So if you want to work with volumes, probably you will need to work with 3D objects and modeling. But I guess Apple will do something about it. Um, one thing I noticed is that um, the privacy is uh, one important thing here. Um, for example, 
uh, there uh, you can have interactions with your war. For example, uh, you can have uh, you, your hand and you can, uh, uh, you know, display something with that. But you will require permissions for that. That's insane. So, yeah, uh, you need to provide access to, you know, to read or scan your hand or, or doing things with that. If you don't provide that, uh, the Vision Pro will not scan your hand and you will not be able to do some functionalities. But that's great because, you know, maybe you don't want to share your body for some reason, but that, that's your option. That's your choice. That's great. I don't know if you if you knew about it, but that's great. Um, other thing, uh, like I said, if you want to implement something in 3D, well, be prepared to use Reality Composer Pro. Uh, don't tell me how. Don't ask me how to use it because I haven't used it yet. But what I know a little bit is, uh, <coughs> and this is because I I use. I follow some game developers. Uh, actually, if you're from Spain, because I, I guess uh, Valeria, I don't know who else is, is from Spain. Uh, there are two great uh, um, content creators there, which is uh, Ginchu and Alba Maggio. Uh, well, both are talking uh, a hot talk about uh, shaders and all of things. And basically here, you are creating a shader. What is a shader? Uh, that's like asking what is a closure. But in, in summary, it's just a function that transform, uh, that do something with the pixel and put it in the screen. So this kind of texture, uh, you, you can create something with uh, like that with shaders. And shaders are just filters, right? So you have some inputs and then you, you create another, uh, an output. And that output will, you know, uh, have, I don't know, uh, a blur effect or a, a transformation, well, I don't know, a, a mirror or, I don't know, put all your uh, pixels in red, etc. That's pretty, pretty a basic example of what is a shader. But if you want to learn more, uh, there is a Reality Composer Pro session there that you should uh, take a look. Uh, <clears throat> let me just drink my poison here. Uh, another thing here, and this is this is really crazy because <clears throat> uh, there are immersion style, but this immersion style is just as uh, it just it's as simple as an enum of three values. This is crazy how they represent that in just three simple. Oh, oh, values. So the first one is mixed. Mixed is like the default one. If you don't set any immersion style, by default will be mixed. So you will see a window in, in front of you and uh, you're good to go. You will see what is going on around. Then there's a progressive, which is like, you know, covering you half of your area, right? But you're still having um, control of your world. So progressive, for example, you will see something like this, right? You will see all a panoramic view of, of what, what you're seeing. And um, yeah, uh, if you enter in this mode, Apple recommends just you follow uh, the default system to exit that option. So if you're in that, in that, uh, in that mode, uh, you can just exit with, the, with just one click. And that is, um, you know, by default for free for Apple, from Apple. A uh, question from Valerio. Are you going to purchase the Vision Pro? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I made I made a, a, a short about it. The answer is yes. But I will suggest if you're not planning to do make an app with that, please don't do it. <laughs> I mean, if you if you want to purchase, it's up to you, right? But there are many constraints with this, this device. First off, um, yeah, everyone is excited about it. 
but most of the people are developers. And and we are now the reception from the normal people, let's say that. <laughs> I mean, my, my mom, my, my, my grandpa, you know, uh, my uncle, all those people. We, we don't know exactly how we'll react to this. Uh, but the first thing is, um, you know, it's pretty expensive. At least in U.S., in U.S. is is a starting price. We are now in Europe. Probably in Europe will be even more expensive, and I don't even know in Mexico. Probably hundred k pesos, which is a lot of money. It's insane. Thirty percent more than what is costing. What is you know thirty percent more than uh, three three fifty hundred. Um, and also uh, there is a limitation of the content. Uh, yeah, I know that the iOS and um, um, iPad OS and Mac OS apps could be ready to go right off the bat. Um, but most of the real apps, I mean, uh, real world apps, maybe will require some time to be an app to Vision OS. I, for example, I, I tried to run my demo from Composable Architecture uh, a few days ago, but for some reason I got some from problems saying that there were some dependencies that were not compatible with Vision Pro, Vision OS. So that kind of things that you need to fix first uh, before launching it. And I don't know, in summary, um, if you are planning to do it, to do some uh, app or just for the science, I would say, yeah, it's a good idea to invest because you're investing this. Uh, but if you're planning to replace your ecosystem, your computer, because, okay, Vision OS is the future and I don't care, I will throw away my computer now. I don't think it's a good idea. It's a first generation device and you know that that is complicated. I am, I mean, that will depend if the second generation probably is a better idea if you pretend to consume um, content there. That's just my 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 thoughts about it but just tell me you are you going to uh, are you going to purchase this device uh <clears throat> well anyway um let's go back a little bit uh with this um we are right off time uh well again uh progressive view is that and then full view is you know you you saw the presentation it's like completely uh immersion okay this is like this kind of thing, right? When you are, I don't know, exploring the desert, right? But look at that. I don't know if you are able to see something here. In this in this example, this is like um, a living room with a table there. So if you are approaching to something, you're walking for some reason, uh, the, 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 the Vision OS system will, will detect that, okay, you are closer to an object and maybe that could hurt you so there will be some kind of a fading effect to warning you hey look at that right so in it won't be a full immersed experience it will be um uh, yeah it will be immersed but at the same time it will try to save your life uh, <coughs> if you are close to, to an object that needs attention that's the thing I, I want to just focus on this. And that's great. It's like they, they taught on this. I have never seen that in another kind of VR. <clears throat> um, and well, that's why Apple is Apple. Uh, another suggestions from the designers are like, um, I mean, try to keep your content as focused as possible and as smaller as possible in the way that Don... Uh, put I don't know a gigantic screen that it maybe is blocking the 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 view from the the person, right? Um, in the case of Safari, they are doing that if um, uh, they uh, want to show the the sidebar here. Uh, well, instead of just having it around, you can just remove it, you know, entirely, and then just you keep your focus smaller and the attention to the user is is better. That's a, one of the suggestions. Uh, this is pretty cool. For example, <clears throat> this is a Keynote uh, demo. And 
uh, look at that. I mean, if you are presenting something, you have uh, the main slide and then you have the, the support slide just behind you. That's amazing. <coughs> I I think this, I think Keynote will be one of the most uh, useful apps here in Vision, Vision OS. Um, more. Uh, <coughs> sorry, I have talked a lot. <laughs> Um, also, uh, one of the suggestions if you're building an app is point um, the the app in front of the screen, uh, in front of the eyes of the user. So uh, don't try to put it in locations that maybe are not ergonomics to the user. So by default, for example, if the if the person is just sit down, uh, they will see that. Uh, and from uh, with with this angle, I'm not sure. I mean, exactly what is that? But just try to put it in in an ergonomic way. Or if, for example, they are in a couch, looking in I don't know 45 degrees, um, uh, position your content accordingly to that. Um, let me see one comment here uh, from Post Guy 13. Uh, my experience with iPad was that I bought on the first day of release. But highest configuration model available was shocked to find out that was quickly became obsolete due to the improved model. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's my point. Yeah, that first generation iPad was, you know, no camera, no nothing. It was fat. So yeah, and then the second generation improved dramatically, right? So <clears throat> uh, I don't know what will happen with with that Vision Pro, but but I'm pretty sure that I don't know. Let's say the third or fourth generation probably will see just glasses, like my my own glasses here, but with a screen device. Who knows, right? The, the big problem right now is 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 the battery. The the, the battery, the battery oh, sucks a lot. That's a that's, that's a pain point of, of that kind of devices. But yeah, we can talk more about uh, in general. Third third gen products are are not a good idea to be honest, because you are a beta tester, and you will pay for that. Apple will not give you anything <laughs> back. Um, one another thing here is, for example, um, uh, they show a demo when they have a, uh, uh, an app. And then if you move your head, the app is moving with that. But you know, that will cause issues. That will cause confusion. And that will cause uh, uh, dizziness. So... Uh, Apple is suggesting, the designers are suggesting just to anchor your app uh, to something, right? It's like a furniture, um, at your computer. Your computer is there, right? It's not moving with you. That's the thing with, with Vision OS and your, and your apps. If you create something, put it there, and then uh, don't pretend that the people will have to move, uh, the app will have to move across with, uh, with the movement of their head. Because, yeah, first off, you will block the vision of the of, uh, of the person. Uh, but in this case, it's like you know, it's a physical, like a physical object that is there, and you can just look around to see again the object. So that's one of the things that looks like looks great. Um, this is more that yeah, fancy stuff. But for example, if you are watching a content, a, a movie, or something. Uh, the the Vision OS is is projecting lights, highlights of the color below of <coughs> of of the video. That's insane. I want to try that. <coughs> also, <coughs> excuse me. Um, if you are uh, planning to put text in your your app, which I guess you will do, uh, please try to avoid three uh, D text. So. The, the recommendation is, the suggestion is to keep it flat, as flat as possible, and just integrate it with the uh, UI. Uh, we saw this already. We saw this, you know, this is the exit mode. Uh, you need to guide the user to remove, to, to go out from the progressive or immersive, or, or the full immersive experience. And yeah, um, I think, uh, I think we just have a few minutes to take a look to uh, the Hello World. Um, again, I don't have that that uh, this demo with me, but yeah, I can take a look 
quickly to what is um, um, this code in Vision OS. But look at that. I mean, if I just remove what is at the, the right of position of your screen, this is Swift UI code. This is, I mean, you can put this for an app, a, a, an iOS app, and it will work as expected. You know, that kind of thing is like, wow, that's Michael. And well, let me now close this thing. Where? Oh, okay. No, let me, let me stop. And now, Let me share quickly. Uh... Okay, give me one simple, one moment. Okay. Maybe in the next one, we could explore the hello world in detail uh but look at that this is just um this is just a hello world oh not not okay i'm still saying hello world no it's uh, uh a blank uh, uh project so let me see if i if i can create a project here nope looks like nope okay um yeah this is the simulator. Uh, I don't know if you have tried it yet. Let me move this. There you go. And let's see uh, what we have here. Well, look at that. It's just a regular app, uh, the regular main that you could find in in a iOS project. Um, here, I just trying to you know make some some playing around here. Um, let me see if I can add something really quick. Let's say, for example, alert, alert. Um, yeah, I just need. Sorry, this is a problem with I am. Oh, what is that? Their percent is a precarious in a future version. Okay, title is presented. Okay, title is presented, presenting actions. What? What is that? Okay, this one, I guess. Title. Blah. Presented, we're going to put here uh, show, show alert. Actions, uh, what? Wait, wait, wait. Actions. So I'm not going to put anything here. And then here we're going to put something like, Uh, actions. I need to review this. Where, what kind of actions I can I can use here? Oh, sorry. Uh, alert. See if you I. One second. Use a view modifier. Okay. Button message text. One 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 second. Okay, we'll just copy and paste this. I'll see what. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Yeah, it's like a uh, uh, regular Swift UI code. I don't know. Are you hearing the the the, the sound? I don't know. I'm hearing that. 
I don't know if you if you are able to to to, to hear it too. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Um, but this is pretty cool. How you can uh, have a simulator? I, I I guess it's not super ergonomic. I don't know how to say. It. I mean, if you're you're if you are creating a regular app like an iOS or iPad, it's like okay, not not bad. But if you are creating something in 3D, I'm not sure how comfortable will be the simulator. I mean, at least we have a simulator, which is great. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't want to make you know some much time here because um, again, I need to still watching some of the dub dub DC sessions and trade this out by my own. Uh, but for example, here we have the the this 3D object, which is this guy here. But I don't know. Let me let me try to move it just to show. Oh, okay. There you go. I think I can move it. I can move it in this way. Ah. Nope. What about if I? Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know if you can see if you can see this. This object is is a three D object. It's quite complicated to move it. Uh, what is that? Oh, oh, I see. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, this is the angle of the vision. Okay, yeah, it's a three D object here that um, you can you can use. So let's see where is this object package? Ready content. Yeah, it looks like it's it's coming from here. Well, the three D object. What is inside of this? Okay. Oh. Oh. This is interesting. Look at that. You can use your model from a URL. Wow. That will be interesting to explore. Okay. Uh. What else we have? Yeah, 3D objects. Okay. Yeah, uh, like I said, um, I will take a look in more details about um, what you can do with uh, Vision OS. I guess, um, I don't know if you have an idea. I have an idea that I will explore with you later. Um, the, but I guess my, I have, some technical limitations uh, right now because I, I need to learn how to do 3D modeling. I, I don't planning to make something super, super complicated, at least for, for now. Um, but something, if I, if I, one of the things I want to explore is the track in their hand, right? I, I want to make some kind of game with that. Uh, but I'm not sure uh, how how you will react to you know the the physics. If if you throw, for example, if you throw an object, um, how you can uh, you know get the distance of of that um, movement or of that kind of things. Probably you can, uh, but I don't know. I need to investigate that. Um, but well, that's about it for now. So. Uh, oh yeah, no sound here. Okay, but probably if you uh, have downloaded uh, the beta two, the Xcode fifteen beta two, you probably can take a look and you will explore. You you will feel it, um, especially if you if you use headset. Uh, it's a good idea because um, all the compared to the uh, other devices where you don't have any feedback, any sound feedback, here is like. I, I feel like you are in the space, <laughs> you know, in another world, in, in Mars, who, who knows, uh, in, in in another planet. And I don't know, feel feel, feel that, that way, right? But feel elegant, elegant and in, in the space, spatial, who knows? 
Uh, well, th that's about it. Um, I I just wanted just to take a look uh, to that. I don't have any specific um, demos or, or, or things to share with you now. Uh, hopefully in, in the future, in, in a later episode, uh, I will talk more in detail about specific things that I uh, find out. That's the point also for, for this kind of podcast to uh, find out things uh, right off the bat to you instead of waiting me to me until making a video. And probably that video could be obsolete in two weeks for some reason. Um, but well, I would like to hear you. So if you have something to me to share later, uh, please let me know in the comments or you know, don't forget to follow me on my social. Um, let me just share my screen lastly before moving on yeah um don't forget my twitter well twitter account swift and tips don't forget uh that i i also have content bullish content in in mastodon if you don't like twitter and yeah most of the time i also on linking linking is a great social media for you uh, you know to find it out but also to share content related to work right um that's it about me so like i said uh saying in my videos uh thank you so much and have a great day oh let me just answer this last question uh, well and thank you everyone by the way for <laughs> being here uh valerio boss guy uh Mohamed, um, serious cat saying that this not work outdoors. Uh, do you mean about the Vision Pro? Oh uh, yeah. Well, I don't know. The theory say yes. You have a external battery that you can use, and you maybe play around. But who knows? Uh, we need to try it out before confirming something. <laughs> well. That's about me, so thank you again, and have a great day.